This video is brought to you by Galaxy of Education's MathGalaxy.com. To review, the SAT consists of three scores, um, writing, critical reading, and math, each scored on a scale of 200 to 800 for possible 2,400 points. There are 10 sections, three writing, including the essay, three math, and three critical reading. There is also a tenth section, which may be a duplicate of any of the writing, except the essay, uh, math, or critical reading sections, uh, which is an experimental ungraded section. But uh, you don't know which of the ten sections is the experimental one, so you should treat all of them as actual. The critical reading consists of 67 questions in its three sections, all multiple choice questions. Sentence completion questions are at the beginning of each of the critical reading sections and consist of a sentence with one or two blanks where you have to choose uh, the word or words that best fit in with the blanks. And these are heavily dependent on vocabulary. If you don't know the meaning of the words in the answer choices, it's going to make it harder. One way to classify sentence completion questions is according to their structure. They can be similar, opposite, or definitional. Here, the first one, the writer came to be labeled blank because she isolated herself in her apartment, shunning outside contact. Uh, okay, so because gives a clue that the relationship between the parts is similarity or parallelism. And the part that doesn't have the uh, blank will give you clues as to what should be in there. She isolated herself, so uh, you could say uh, she's a, a recluse, a loner. And you want to choose your own word before looking at the answer choices. Uh, and uh, so here a loner looks like the best choice. Okay, second sentence. No longer narrowly preoccupied with their own national past, historians are increasingly blank in that they often take a transnational perspective. So here in that suggests similarity between the parts. Okay, and again the part without the blank gives you a clue in that they are transnational. So you can borrow from the other parts of the sentence. If you can't come up with your own word, well, borrow from that. Use transnational. Okay, and then you want to look for the words, the word that means transnational which is cosmopolitan. You don't need to know every definition. If you can eliminate two answer choices, uh, statistically it pays to guess. Okay, next sentence. Guys who's very wily. Some may discharge blank, whereas others may have only a brief explosive eruption and then remain blank for hours or days. So here, whereas suggests opposite construction. Okay, so, and there, the opposites can go both ways. Uh, some can't may discharge um, violently. So the opposite of that would be, say, quiet. Or the other possibility is they may discharge quietly so, and then re uh, and then become violent. Okay, so this is one with two blanks. So which one is best to start with? Uh, well, the one that has the clue associated with it. And in this one, sometimes you may have a double negative. So even the, so 
here it says the explos uh, uh, explosive eruption so that suggests this one should be because then and then suggests opposite within this section and then re remain quiet okay so that tells us it's this construction uh, of opposites okay so once you get your own words you want to, for the double one you want to go through one of the blanks through all the answer choices to eliminate what ones you can okay so the first one well it looks like violently uh, could work uh, but continuously can also be a possibility spontaneously well yeah that could be a possibility rarely yes but that really only eliminates faintly so now we have to go through the other blank to go through what's left well dangerous is not the same as quiet so note here violently seemed pretty good so they try to suck you in to choose this one but this doesn't fit in with the second the idea of the second blank quiescent fits in unpredictable well possibly but quiescent seems more fitting and active is the opposite and imperceptible doesn't fit so the pair that fits in with the meaning of both is B some may discharge continuously whereas others may have only a brief explosive eruption and then remain quiet for hours or days the third type definitional is like uh, a similar construction uh, so here many private universities depend heavily on blank the wealthy individuals who support them with gifts and bequests so the second part is more information about the first part so wealthy individuals who support them so you can use that phrase or just something like wealthy uh, donors okay and what should these mean wealthy donors uh, benefactors what makes sentence completion questions hard is the meaning of the answer choices and they particularly like to use secondary meanings for example first sentence the belief in UFOs has gained blank in recent years uh, if you thought of currency as money you wouldn't have chosen it but it also means acceptance the belief in UFOs has gained currency or acceptance in recent years second his appreciation of art is blank if you think a pedestrian is someone who walks you wouldn't have chosen it but it also means lacking interest or imagination third one Easter Island has its own blank flora and fauna if you thought of peculiar as strange you would have chosen it but also means distinctive flora and fauna and next one there are blank of reasons for calling him blank including deceit so this looks like similar construction and if you had these choices you said well there are a lot of reasons that means seems to make sense so and if you're thinking of host as host of a party or host of a game show you wouldn't have chosen that and if you didn't know the meaning of the second two you'd be tempted to choose a so let's look at the parallel construction so this is a clue to the second part deceit so uh, so we can use that here deceitful okay uh, which uh, perfidious means uh, and fastidious means fussy that doesn't fit in with the meaning of being uh, deceitful and host uh, meaning a multitude fits in here there are a host of reasons for calling him uh, perfidious including deceit 
Okay, next one. His support for the candidate was blank. He praised the candidates blank. Okay, so again, the uh, semicolon suggests somewhat definitional, so a similar construction. And it can be both. Similar construction can be both positive towards the candidate, or both could be relating to negative towards the candidate. And here, the clue as to which is praised. So, there you go. Okay, so we're looking for positive words. Again, if you didn't know perniciousness or sagacity, you might be tempted to choose A. His support was absolute. If you were thinking of unqualified as not having the skills, well, not having the skills is not something you would pray, but a secondary meaning is uh, unqualified can mean absolute or not limited, which fits in. His support for the candidate was unqualified. He praised the candidate's sagacity, meaning wisdom. Perniciousness means causing harm. Some key words that help you with the structure of a sentence uh, are words that suggest similarity or and also similarly as well as as if, like, or proves. Words that suggest opposite construction are although, even though, however, but, despite, instead, nonetheless, whereas, in contrast, rather than, far from, not sufficient. Cause-effect words are generally similar construction, because, hence, therefore, since, consequently, in effect, that. And punctuation uh, suggests similarity, often definitional, colon, uh, semicolon, and a comma without uh, any other conjunction. And uh, the sentence completion questions are only about a third of the reading comprehension uh, uh, score. So the passages will count towards that score more. This is the end of the sentence completion part of critical reading. The passages will be in a separate video. Thank you for listening.